Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and this is the second part in a three part series on using Arduinos and CMRI to connect to JMRI. Part one was really just combining two projects that I've done before using sensors and servos into a single package. We set up an Arduino Mega with a sensor shield as a CMRI node from which we could control our servos and read our sensor inputs. In this part, I'll show you how we can take this a step further and change some of those inputs to outputs to which we can connect motors, lights, or pretty much anything you can think of. If you haven't seen part one, then probably best to do that now. Otherwise, let's get started. So here's our hardware from the previous video. We've got the Arduino Mega with the sensor shield on top. The sensor shield is connected to an external five volt power supply. On sets of pins 20 and 21, we've got the PCA9685 servo driver board with our servo connected on the first set of pins there. Again, that's connected to the external five volt power supply. Then to quickly recap part one, we configured set of pins number three to be a sensor input and on the board, I plugged in this infrared sensor. Remember we had to start at set of pins labeled three because we can't use the set of pins labeled zero, one or two. They're already being used in other parts of the code. I connected an infrared sensor to this input, but remember this could be any compatible sensor. For example, a block occupancy current sensor, a photosensitive sensor, or even a simple switch. So for inputs, this setup is really useful and flexible. Great, but what about outputs? We've got the servos, but what about motors, lights, electromagnets, etc.? Well, it's actually really easy, but we need to modify our sketch. This is the modified sketch. You can download this from the GitHub repository and I'll put a link in the description below. So the first change I've made is here where we're setting up the CMRI connection. I've said that we're gonna use more outputs and change this to be 128 rather than the 32 from part one. My logic is that the first 100 CMRI addresses can be used for servos and then anything after 100 can be used for other outputs. It's just a way of splitting the different types of outputs into easy to remember CMRI address ranges of connections but you can organize this however you like. Then in the setup section, I've changed the for loop so that only sets of pins up to 45 are inputs and then pins 46 to 69 on the sensor shield are set as outputs. No specific reason for choosing these pins. I just thought that all the pins in this column on the board could be used for outputs and 46 is the first set and 69 is the last set. Then we've got this section at the bottom where I'm assigning a bit and CMRI address to the new outputs. So set of pins 46 are on bit 100, which will be address 1101. So that's the sketch modified. Get it uploaded to your Arduino and let's take a look at the hardware. So let's say I want to control this strip of LED lighting using set of pins 46 as an output. Well, the first thing to do is plug in the normal three wire connection that you should be familiar with by now. The orange wire is the signal, the red wire is plus five volts and the dark color is ground. So let's get that plugged in now. Unfortunately, we can't just connect this to the LED lighting strip. If you were gonna run a single low current LED with a resistor, then the signal pin might provide enough power without overloading the Arduino. However, this LED strip runs off 12 volts and draws over 200 milliamps. And that's far too much for this set of pins to handle directly from the Arduino. So what we need is something in between the Arduino and the 12 volt LED circuit, which will act as a switch. Something that when it gets the signal from the Arduino, it will switch on the LEDs. And we've got a couple of options for this. Firstly, we could use a relay board. You can get these as individual modules or in blocks of four or eight together. They're pretty cheap and you can get them for under one pound each. This has got a three pin header for our wire on one end. This box in the middle is an electromagnetic switch. And on the other side, just like a single pole double throw switch, we've got a common connection in the middle and then a normally open and normally closed on either side. So when it gets the signal from the Arduino, the electromagnet activates and it physically moves a little arm from connecting these two terminals to connecting these two terminals, thus completing the circuit for the LEDs. These are great if you want to activate something that needs a lot of current, since these can handle up to 10 amps apparently, which is a heck of a lot. So these might be useful for activating solenoid point motors if you weren't using servos, for example. However, there are some downsides. Firstly, you can hear a click as the arm in the switch moves, and that can get pretty annoying.
And because it needs to physically move a switch, it can be a bit slow. And also with anything that moves, there will be a mechanical wear and a greater chance of failure over time. Should you want to try these, then I'll put a link in the description below. However, because these LEDs only need just over 200 milliamps of current, I think there's something better we can use. This is an IRF520 MOSFET driver module. These cost slightly more than the relay modules, but they're still around one pound each. Again, we've got the three pin connection for the Arduino on the bottom, but instead of a physical switch, we've got a MOSFET. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor, and explaining how it works is beyond the scope of this video, but effectively, it's a switch without any moving parts. The benefits of these boards over the relays are that they're faster, they don't make a noise, and they don't have any mechanical parts that can wear out. Plus, they can be used with pulse width modulation for dimming or motor speed regulation. One downside of these is that they can only really handle one amp of current before they start to get hot and you need to fit heat sinks to dissipate the heat. And five amps is the absolute limit, but that should be more than enough for most applications on a model railway. On the other side of the board, we've got connections for the device that we want to operate. So we'll attach the LEDs to here. And next to it, we've got connections for the power supply that the device needs. So I've got a 12 volt power supply here. So we'll wire that all in now. Before we move on to JMRI, I should just mention these. This is a solid state relay board. It does the same job as a relay, but uses electronics rather than a mechanical arm. So sounds good, but it will only work with alternating current devices. Great if you want to turn on a lamp or something like that, but not so good for model railways where everything is normally direct current. Right, we've got the LEDs attached to the MOSFET module connected to pin 46 on the Arduino. Let's get that set up in JMRI. First thing to check is you've got your CMRI connection on node one with board 19,200. And that we've updated the card, so we've got two input cards and four output cards. Open up your tables and we've already got the turnout and sensor from video one. But now let's go to the lighting table. Go to the CMRI tab and select add. In the hardware address, we need to use 1101 because that's the address we gave to pin 46 in the sketch. Give it a username like LT1, click create, now if you click on the state then we should hopefully see the MOSFET module activate and the LEDs come on. Another cool thing you can do with this lighting table is add a controller. So if we go back into the light and edit it, click on add controller and this menu pops up. We can have this light activated by a number of different things. A sensor, two sensors, a turnout, so that might be useful if we were creating a mimic panel. We can have it respond to a fast clock so maybe all your building lights come on when it's night time on your layout. We can have it come on for a set time after a sensor is activated, so maybe the light in the engine shed comes on for 20 seconds once the locomotive arrives. The possibilities are endless. Let's have our lights come on when our sensor is active. So select your sensor as the control sensor, hit create, then go to update, okay. And now if I wave my hand in front of the sensor, the lights should come on. And this same process can be used for all kinds of outputs, not just LEDs. We could attach motors, electromagnets for decouplers, a sound unit. You're probably thinking, but there isn't a table in JMRI for all these things. But it doesn't matter. You can either set them up in the turnout or the lighting table because essentially we're just turning them on and off. So that's how you can add some outputs to your CMRI node really easily. Quite a few people have asked about mimic panels and I still plan on doing a video on that particular topic, but hopefully this has given you some ideas about how you can go about creating it. Having a single large CMRI node that can handle all your inputs and outputs is great if you've got a small to medium sized layout. But what if you've got a large layout? Maybe you need more connections or maybe you just don't want wires covering really long distances from your central hub to your furthest sensor. Well, in the third part of this series, I'm gonna to try to create multiple smaller nodes that we can spread around the layout and link together using a single CMRI bus wire. I say try it because I haven't actually done this yet and it could all be a massive failure, but that's half the fun, isn't it? Experimenting with this stuff and giving it a go. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification button so YouTube will let you know when part three comes out. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.